Is Animac trying too hard to shock the audience? Too many dramatic storylines going on at once. Let's talk about it. What's going on, YouTube? Ah. So, I've been thinking the last few days, and um, this topic has kind of been circling around in my mind lately, and it really got me thinking, you know, because you guys know I, I love drama, you know, it, it's one of the reasons I love Andy Mack, because there's, you know, the, the there's just so much drama in the show. Very rarely will you hear me complain about a show having too much drama. If anything, I'll complain that it doesn't have enough drama, even when there's already a lot of drama. I like drama, basically, is what I'm trying to tell you guys, right? But, you know, lately I've been thinking, is Andy Mac trying maybe a little bit too hard? You know, it's a you know, add that shock value to all of their episodes and storylines and whatnot. Like, are, are they trying too hard to be over dramatic with every storyline? Do they have too many storylines in general that are too much? Because I was thinking the other day about the whole Buffy moving storyline, right? Like, I, I was just thinking about that. Like, okay. When that happened, it was dramatic, right? It was dramatic, it was emotional. Um, I think everybody was shocked, like, what is going on here? It was crazy, right? I don't think anybody's gonna argue that that wasn't a, a crazy, dramatic, you know, moment and, 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 you know, experience at the time. But, you know, <sighs> but then the way it ended, you know, it was like, oh my God, this is so emotional, Buffy's moving. You know, what are, we, what are we gonna do? You know, everything is gonna change now, you know? It's crazy. And then like, the next day it's like, psych, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> it's like, what? What are you, what, what, no! Like, what, what was the point of that storyline? What was the point? Like, they, they didn't even drag it out for any, like I, I thought, I thought that they were going to drag this out for at least a decent amount of time. Like, I thought that they were going to drag it out into season three. I don't even think that they dragged it out for, like, more than an episode before she came back. You know, it, it's like, I don't think that there's a better example of a storyline on this show that happened just for the dramatic effect just so they can, you know, shock the audience or something, you know, but it didn't really go anywhere, or it didn't really have any lasting impacts on anything, it was just, you know, there for no real reason, you know, and I think the danger of doing that so often is that you end up having all of these shock value storylines that, yeah, when they first happen, everybody is shocked in, in, in their feels, but you know, by the end of the story, if the audience isn't satisfied with the journey of that story and the way it ended and everything about it, then it's kind of just like, after a while, it just starts to leave a bad taste in your mouth. And then you just start wondering, okay, what, what am I doing with my life? Why am I watching this? What, what is going on right now? At least that's how I feel. You know, I think at the time of the Buffy storyline and when that ended, I think I was... I was so focused on the fact that she was back and I was happy about that, you know, and I was, you know, that, that at the time, that's kind of all I was thinking about, you know, the, hey, like, one of my favorite characters is back on the show, yeah, forget everything else, you don't, for, but, but, <laughs> but now that I've had time to reflect, I'm just thinking, that storyline was stupid, <laughs> like, that storyline was dumb, like, it was pointless, you know, like, it, it could have easily have not happened and it would have changed nothing. I mean, I guess you can argue it was entertaining, but you know, to me, a story can't just be dramatic and have a dumb ending or dumb, you know, journey 
But hey, it was dramatic though, so and hey, you you were in your feels. Admit it, you were in your feels. You know you were. Alright, okay, so what? It was still dumb. <laughs> At the end of the day, it was still stupid. You know, it was pointless. Didn't need to be there. So that's just an example though that, that, that's kind of like the best example i got which is why i'm harping on it so much but it's not just the buffy thing i just feel like andy mac is you know they have a lot of storylines going on right now and you can just tell that they're trying to be as dramatic as possible with as many plot twists as possible you know with 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 um as much shock value as possible and i and i can appreciate all those all of those things like trust me nobody appreciates those things more than i do okay add a love triangle to that scenario that i just said and you got me all right you you got me all right i'm I, like i'm happy okay but at at the same time i don't want them i don't want andy mac to just focus on trying to be as dramatic as possible with as much you know as, as many um you know um cliffhangers as possible and as much shock value as possible and just you know forget about just telling a good story you know like just telling like because i would rather have one or two really really good storylines going on than to have like four or five you know mediocre storylines going on or, or four or five storylines that you know are really dramatic but you know they're not really doing anything or they're you know you know you, you get what i'm trying to say I, I don't know if i'm putting this into the best of words but I, what i'm trying to say is i want andy mac to focus a little bit less on just trying to be as dramatic as possible and instead just focus on telling really really good storylines like i mean i'm not saying get rid of the drama again i'm not saying that i'm just saying i feel like andy mac has a lot going on right now and i feel like it's inevitable that some of these storylines are going to end in kind of disappointment or just, you know, like it wasn't the best, you know. Um, I mean, I already feel like that with Jairus. Now, now, granted, with, with, with Jairus, I'm not going to say that, that there was no point in him, you know, saying he likes Jonah because there was a there was a point to it because, you know, the point was him coming out. But I would argue, and I don't want to get too much into this because I, plan, I, I still plan on making a video about this, but I, I will say this. I will say this. If they didn't plan on going anywhere with that storyline, if they didn't plan on ever tackling that storyline with Jairus at all, then they could have had Cyrus come out in some other way. That made sense. And that's all I'm going to say about that in this video, because again, I have a whole nother video talking about that. But anyways, what do you guys think? Are you fine with how Andy Mac are, are, are doing things right now? Are you fine with, you know, all the storylines and all the cliffhangers and all the shock value and all of that? Are you fine with all that? Am I, am I just, am I tripping? Am I tripping? Was that Buffy storyline like legit and I just don't know what I'm talking about? Let me know in the comment section, people. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch and on Instagram because I have made my official Instagram comeback. All right, I am on there a lot more these days. I'm actually on there more than Twitter, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, people, I think I'm done talking. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. But, um, yeah. I think uh, that's about it. Until next time. Cyrus. She left already. No, she's not leaving till the morning. Cyrus, she can't just be gone. <laughs> Wait a minute.